please let me go. I am innocent. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. Can I examine anything? Okay, so wait a second. So I can uh, piece together more of the puzzle. Swift action. Speeder Carey was armed with his knife, but he did not have time to use it. The murderer acted quickly and instinctively. So, what about that, and then pin to the wall? Okay, cool. That, to me, makes sense. You need to find out whether an unskilled and untrained man could use a harpoon well enough to kill by fully piercing a body. That's because I was thinking, he's got a thin neck, he's a skinny kid, there is no way he could have taken this full-on harpoon, shoved it through a man, and pinned him against a wall. There's just no way. I need to stage a reconstruction. I'm sure that Watson would be happy to oblige. Let's just not use Mr. Watson, Mr. Holmes. So cool. I'm I'm actually getting into this. I'm liking this. Now, it, earlier I could go down here. Does this uh does this actually go anywhere? Well, I mean, not go anywhere, but is there anything down here? Oh, this is kind of weird. I'm guessing they're just leaving this kind of thing open because eventually another case, or maybe this same case, there's going to be a body down here. So they're la leaving it open for us to know, like, hey, you can come down here at any time. Alright. So if that's the case, I think... What, I just need to go back to my place and, um, and stage it. So, we're at Scotland Yard, Woodsman's Lee, and let's go back to Baker Street. I also, I do kind of like this. I mean, I know it's not really open world or anything of such, but it's, uh, allowing us, uh, to choose where we want to go. So, I mean, we can spin our wheels and go back to the crime scene if you miss something or, uh, you know, back to Scotland Yard. I kind of like that. It gives us the choice of kind of picking where we want to go like that. Okay. So, hopefully I'm not wrong here. Talk to Watson to see if we can recreate this. A spot of whaling, Watson. Would you care to take part? Are you serious? No, but we do need to clarify what happened on the night of Black Peter's murder. A reenactment, then? Is something bothering you? The sailor's knife, Watson. Why was it on the floor? Peter Carey attempted to defend himself? It is a possible. But if that is the case, then it alters many things. I don't quite follow you. Tell me, my friend, what is the animal closest to man? Morphologically, I mean. Ah, I see what you're getting at, Holmes. You asked me that once before, on the Ripper case, I believe. Do you want to slit some more pig's throats? <laughs> it's a favorite pastime. No. Well, thank goodness for that. I wish to impale one with a harpoon. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and in Mythbusters, we get along swimmingly. Our butcher friend in Whitechapel. We require the carcass of a well-fed pig. And the harpoon? One of the harpoons on the wall of Black Peter's cabin should do quite nicely. Okay, so I have a prompt up here. Oh, wait a second. I can't look at the puppy? Tell me I can look at the puppy. Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. At least we're not going to experiment on him. He's too cute. Uh, so Whitechapel Butcher has just opened up, so I guess I we need, need to, to go there. With me. Okay, seriously, game. This is the only problem I have with you so far. Stop up the crazy Dutch angles. We, we don't need those. Okay, so we need to find a harpoon. Don't tell me I can... Is he still pinned to the wall? Okay, good. <laughs> I was gonna say. Like, we do not... 
Let that man get off the wall. Okay, so here we go. That should do it. Now I am ready for the experiment. All right. Oh yeah. If any of you are vegetarians, you're gonna love all this, aren't you? Ah, uh, bacon. So, I'm guessing. Okay, so maybe I need to talk to Watson. Yeah. Well, here we are in the preparation room. I can't say that I like the smell of it much. What do you Probably not to very do? pleasant. To indulge myself in a little experiment. The challenge of lancing a pig's carcass with a head. I swear to God, this could be Mythbusters. A little experiment? Stand aside, Watson. This might be dangerous. I am not well practiced in this exercise. Yet. <laughs> but I soon will be. Holmes, you should aim for the mark in order to perform the most reliable test. All right, let me let me move. Uh uh ah, uh. Watson, you're saved by how far I can move this. Hold breath. Oh. Holmes, you should try to aim better and throw as hard as you can. Oh, so this is weird, guys. Like, okay, so I have to hold my breath. And it's going to go back and forth. Ah! And, like, I'm trying to get it right in the, the dead center while I'm trying to aim with this. And this is going back and forth, and the aiming is going off. This is, this is a little weird. The harpoon oh. has struck the body, but with insufficient strength to pierce it straight That's through. not going right through. Try this again. Damn it! You should try to aim better and throw as hard as you can. I'm I'm trying. Shit, Watson! Get off my case. I'm liking how that center's getting bigger. Like here, stupid. Ah, come on! I seventh time is the charm, or whatever it is. I'm going to get this. I swear to God. I can be your hero, baby. This is okay. the best possible result that I could get. Do you see, Watson? Throwing a harpoon and pinning a man to a wall requires either exceptional strength and training or diabolical luck. If it was luck, then it was a chance in a thousand that night. Yeah, that little well, guy couldn't yes. have done this. Let us leave now. All right. But before we go, I, I suppose I'll have to pay for all these carcasses you've happily mangled. It's only one. Very well, but please hurry. Of course. <laughs> Prepare for her pruning throwing experiment completed. Oh, I can't take the harpoon. You never know when you might need one. Okay. Uh... Back to Scotland Yard? Guessing? Watch, you look in the book and all he's reading is like C Spot Run. Alright. <laughs> this is the butcher coming here to complain about all the pigs I just mutilated. Am I supposed to deduce here again? Okay. Pin to the wall. Through the chest like a butterfly. Yeah, that's strength requirement. That should be it. There we go. Requires a much greater strength than that of an average man to be able to pierce a man's chest with a harpoon all the way through to the wall. Degree of skill would most likely be necessary. Two men in cooperation might achieve the same result. Lucky throw. I like the feat of strength one. I don't think typically Sherlock Holmes would go for luck. Wait. So one is... No, 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 no. So, okay. So I was right. So you choose one. That's highlighted. Do I piece together some other ones? So, okay. Uh, the notebook... 
Peter Carey, a non-smoker, no gardener, missing tin box, breaking attempts. That breaking attempts. Well, okay, those two are connected. All right, man, I was just wrong on that one. Retrieving the notebook. The breaking attempts were made in order to recover the notebook that had been lying in a pool of the victim's blood. This proves the guilt of the person who made these attempts. Hmm. I don't know. Do you think the, the kid had anything to do with this? Do we want to, to make that deduction? All right. But it just doesn't seem to line up with Fia's strength. So maybe we're suggesting then that there were two people. There were two attackers. I was at Scotland Yard, but I hadn't made these deductions yet. Uh, let's go back to the Woodman, Woodman's Lee's place. Because what I'm thinking is, maybe since I've made these deductions, it opens up possibly seeing some stuff that I couldn't see before. Like, if I'm deducing that there were two people that did the killing, maybe now something will show itself that will reveal that? I don't know. Let's see if we can talk to the wife again. About any of this stuff. Who could do such a thing? Oh, husband. <laughs> well, we definitely know it's not you. You're not picking up and throwing harpoons. You old rat bastard! <laughs> so that's not it. Let's go back to Scotland Yard then. Open case book. <laughs> Search archives. Oh, wait! I'm a moron. That's right. He mentioned that he recognized the name on that, and that it was back in his archives, back at his study. Let's, uh, let's go back to his place. Alright. So, it's in his archives. My analysis table. It is useful for my work. You're not looking in <laughs> that telescope again. <laughs> Is this his archives? Ah, there we go. Uh, oh, okay, I gotcha. So, botany, medicine, history, technology, science. Okay, that's cool. All right, so I'm guessing then this would be would be a history thing, would it? it okay, so LBRB will also then take me to other things. 1883, I, I, I'm going to go back to that. I just want to look. So we have research, poisons, talking, uh, wounds and injuries, current, martial arts. Holy shit. All right, Gunner. Uh, yeah, this does go pretty in-depth then. Holy crap. Okay. So newspapers. Uh, 1883 is the year, and we can go all the way up to 1894. Shit. All right. Good to know. Uh... That is not. Here we go. Dawson knows an investigate fi fund bankrupt. Belgian missing. Uh, investment fund, a re regional banking institution based in Cornwall, has declared bankruptcy as a result of heavy losses in its loan portfolio and has accordingly has been assigned for liquidation. It was the 23rd largest bank in Britain and its bankruptcy was the second largest on record. Liquidation of the company is a pure catastrophe for many Cornwall families. Joshua Nelgan, Nelligan, one of the bank uh, keepers, has since mysteriously disappeared. Banker, excuse me. He was last seen aboard his yacht preparing for departure to Norway. Nelligan is wanted both by the police and his creditors. Here it is. Now I begin to understand that young man's story, but I am still unclear as to what connects him with the murder. It is time to ask him. All right. That's cool. You know, I have to appreciate, I mean, it's so funny. With nowadays with games, typically, there's a lot of hand-holding that goes on with games. And I'm a huge fan of the old-style... Uh, adventure, you know, point-and-click games. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I got into the line of work that I do and, you know, the developer I work with. And, 
so I really appreciate a game like this that kind of goes back to that that old style. I mean, I love Grim Fandango and Full Throttle, uh, Day of the Tentacle, um, The Dig. Stuff that you could get hung up on pretty damn well, especially back then when the internet wasn't either around or just barely starting, so you couldn't just Google something and a billion things popped up for that one thing that you want. So, I do actually kind of appreciate in this where you can get stumped. And you have to kind of, like, figure some things out, you know? I think the only thing I haven't liked getting stumped on is just the controls. I'm figuring, like, oh, I'm a dummy. I could press LB and RB and it would take me to other sections. I wish that was a little bit more clearly laid out. But aside from that, I'm actually liking this. So, let's go talk to the kid uh, about his family's bankruptcy. Okay, and we've already examined him, so we don't need to do that again. I have heard the story of Dawson and Nelligan, the West Country bankers. Yes, Joshua Nelligan was my father. I am aware that it had a bad ending. When the bank failed, it ruined half the families of Cornwall, whereupon Joshua Nelligan disappeared. My father was under extraordinary pressure. Dawson had retired. I was only ten years of age at the time, but... It was still old enough to feel the shame that befell our family. My father was convinced that he could pay off all his debts if the creditors gave him time. He set sail for Hammerfest in Norway in his small yacht just a few days before an arrest warrant was issued. He left my mother a list of the securities he was taking. No word was ever heard from him again. We believed that his vessel went down, taking with it everyone and everything on board. Thank you for the story, Mr. Nelligan. At last, we are making some progress. Is his father still alive, then? Interesting. Joshua Nelligan and Peter Carey were both at sea in Norway. There is definitely some connection between Peter Carey and Joshua Nelligan's disappearance. Examine the ship's logs. Okay, so... Are the ship logs the ones that um, were back at the victim's house? Because remember, we clicked on the logs that were on the shelves. I mean, I doubt... I mean, I could be wrong about this. I doubt Sherlock Holmes has the... Every ship's logs or something like that at his place. So I'm guessing it's at Woodman Lee. So let's check out that first before... I mean, I could be completely wrong... Sherlock, who the hell knows what eclectic things he's just kept for whatever reason. While it's going here, let's, uh... Visit murder. Carry. Well, it seems not to be a thief. Pulls up the ship's log. Wait. This is 1883. I think I might actually... I could be wrong here. I might have to go back to Sherlock's pad. Because he just has the ship's log. I mean, I'm not going to judge. Who knows? But I could have sworn there was a ship's log in here, and that would be the connection then to the murderer. But I could be wrong. 18 oh, nope, I was right. That's the one I need. This cool. is the crew list of the Sea Unicorn. Oh, wait. I wonder if the abbreviation in the notebook that we got off the kid, if the abbreviations match to this, PCM, or, I mean, CA, because he was first mate. Examine this text. This is the crew list of the Sea Unicorn. Log page. notes for June. Nothing unusual. Log notes for July. Nothing special. August. Then. Log notes for August. These pages have been torn away. Canadian Pacific Railway. Canadian Pacific Railway, CPR. A torn piece from a bond certificate. I have seen this abbreviation somewhere very recently. There are three ways of discovering what happened in August of 1883 aboard the Sea Unicorn. The first two of these will require speaking with a dead man. The last would be to locate vital witnesses, 
the sailors involved in this whale hunt campaign. Hmm. Find a use. A piece of stock exchange certificate belonging to the Canadian Pacific Railway, CPR. It was found inside the Sea Unicorn ship's log for August 1883, where the pages had been torn out. Ship's log for the Sea Unicorn. For you to, uh, the book has a list of sailors beginning with the pages of August has been torn out. Okay, so we have this. We've looked at the ship's logs. Find the crew of the Sea Unicorn. Yeah, because we can't talk to a dead dude, unfortunately. Um, I wonder if I can draw any more conclusions right now. Clues. Missing box. Nope, they're still the same ones. Alright. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Did I see another one highlighted? No, okay, sorry. I was looking at that and I thought that was something else to, uh, to click on. Alright. So let's get out of here. We have to go back to, to Sherlock's study. To find? Well, here. Tasks. Wiggins might help find the crew of this. Wiggins might help to find the crew of the senior, and he should be somewhere at Baker Street. Okay, so yeah, Baker Street. Cool. Wiggins. Am I thinking this wrong name? Wiggins. Isn't that like the name of the. Uh, the police chief on The Simpsons? Uh, yeah, Mrs. Simpson, I have some bad news. Your husband was found D.O.A. Oh my god, he's dead? Oh wait, I mean D.W.I. <laughs> I always get those two mixed up. Hmm, this is taking longer to load new, the Watson. Watson. Was I have the list of sailors who were aboard the Sea Unicorn. We shall soon learn what happened to Nelligan's father. I have only to find them. Let us hope they are still working at the harbor. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard... I doubt it, Watson. And really, I would prefer that all of this remains quiet for now. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. And who might they be? The secret police division of Baker Street. Ah, you mean young Wiggins and his gang? Yes. Believe me, you'll receive more useful assistance from these little urchins than from a dozen Yard detectives. Those children are everywhere. They see and hear everything, and they are cunning. All they lack is organization. I'll summon them. How will you do that? There is always a watch beneath our window. I have the only to call bark. him. You know, so, okay, I remember in the recent Sherlock Holmes TV show uh, with Cumberpatch, he also has his kind of like organization of spies from the homeless people and that kind of stuff. Is that just a common... I mean, I like Sherlock Holmes. I'm just not like a purist or a truist or whatever you want to say. I haven't like read and seen everything Sherlock Holmes. So is that like a common theme with Sherlock Holmes? That like his eyes and ears are the vagrants and the children or the homeless typically? Is that normally a Sherlock Holmes thing? By the way, let's see what we can see in the telescope. <laughs> you can read, can't you? Big Oliver from our gang. He can, as his father is the coachman of a famous lawyer. Fascinating. Here is the list of sailors. Just got to look where the rum and the red lights are. <laughs> 